Hey, everybody. I'm Mark Conway, and this is Family Meal. And some of you know that I started Family Meal back years ago as a podcast and a radio show when I was on iHeartRadio. And it, it all kind of spun off of the notion that there was this, this period of time in, in our lives and that we had this now historical event, which was family dinner, where everybody actually sat around the dinner table. Cell phones weren't really a thing at the time. Pagers weren't even really a thing at the time. And we, at every day, every day at a certain point in time, we sat down and had dinner together. We talked because there was no distraction. There was nothing else going on. And it was kind of this ritualistic thing we did every single day. It has now fallen to become something that you hear about in nostalgia or whispers and memories and things like that. But I think along the way with the rise of technology and social media and things like that and now streaming services, so many things have gotten in the way of family talking. And not just blood family, but friends who are like family and people getting together and people cooking together. That's really something that has fallen away. It's starting to come back in some uh, in some vein, but in a lot of ways, we've lost that. And that was a really, really fundamental time. I know with my twins, we have done it since they were born. I have sat around a dinner table with them every single night because that is important to me, and it's it's given us that time to talk. So... I wanted to restart this with the new medium of video and really be able to to let you hear stories from around other people's dinner tables. Now, these are going to be from every country you can think of. They're going to be from every type of person you can think of. And I'm not just talking about chefs and I'm not just talking about people in the culinary world. We're going to hear from everybody because truly all of us at some point in time has sat around a dinner table that didn't include something like Thanksgiving or a holiday. So... We're going to kick this off with a good friend of mine. We've known each other for several years now. We met at the World Food Championships, and it didn't take us long to, to find that kindred spirit, and we just became great friends and that food sport family that, that you hear a lot of people talk about. And this guy has done it, done it all. Chef, restaurateur, has his own line of products. He's been on Food Network, everything from Food Network star to beat Bobby Flay, which I just want to point out, he successfully beat Bobby Flay. Not something a lot of people have done. And he comes to World Food Championships every year and provides not only his commentary, not only his, his resources and his knowledge, he provides an energy that is unlike many people that you'll ever meet. So he's one of those people that you want to gravitate towards, you want to be around, and you want to talk with. And I tell you, I, I can't be happier to kick this off with anyone else than my great friend, Jay Dakota. How are you, sir? Mark, good to see you, man. Thank you for that introduction. That was awesome. Man, absolutely. Like, we talked about this a little bit before this was all going to get started, and, and I knew this is where we were going to kick this off again is with you. And because you've got... You got, you know, you've, you, people have told you before, even when I watched you on Food Network Star, that infectious personality that is genuine and real, and people just really kind of gravitate towards you. Well, I appreciate that. It's, it's hard to, it's hard to know that from the outside, right? I can certainly feel it a little bit. People uh, gravitating towards me. I, I certainly appreciate the kind words. Uh, you know, I think a big part of it for me is, uh, is exactly what you just said. You know, just just trying to be genuine and, uh, and, and just put myself out there, uh, not ever really try to, to be anybody other than myself. Um, and, and I think a big part of the whole philosophy for me is to make sure I'm having fun. Cause if I'm having fun, the people around me are going to be having fun. And quite frankly, I, I've kind of subscribed to the philosophy of if you're not having fun, it's not worth doing. Like what, why are you doing something, uh, for your life, for your job, for, for, you know, we, we've got a limited amount of time here. You might as well be enjoying whatever it is that you're doing. A hundred percent. You've got to, you got to find what makes you happy, what makes you laugh, what makes you feel something. Yeah. And, you know, you and I share that with food and people. We kind of, that, that's those, those things. And the fact that we found a way to, to combine all of that together is kind of where you want to be. Yeah, I completely agree with that. You know, I, I, I think I was searching for kind of, uh, you know, the language with which to express myself uh, for a while. Uh, I actually... 
got degrees in economics and political science. I, I thought I was going to be a political science professor. Uh, I got a master's degree and then and then stopped uh, and said, ah, I'm not going to be a political scientist for the rest of my life because I'm not going to be happy dealing with politics. Um, I, I taught high school math for a couple of years, coached baseball, had uh, a lot of really great experiences working with uh, kids in, in that environment, but it still just wasn't quite me. Uh, and, and then I was working a, a job for the state of Louisiana doing policy research and grant writing, and, and I was good at it, but I was in a cubicle all day and uh, staring at a computer screen writing, uh, and, and I just kind of said, you know, what else can I do uh, with this time? And, uh, and so I started writing about food. I wrote about what I ate for lunch that day, and, uh, I, you know, I had always been into food. Like, I learned how to cook throwing tailgate parties for LSU football games, and uh, I have fond memories uh, cooking with my dad at hunting camps and in Louisiana and South Texas, and my, my both of my grandmothers were excellent Cajun cooks, uh, the jambalayas and gumbos and rice and gravies and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and and so I always had a fondness for food, but it really wasn't until I started writing about food that that I really got into it and, and became uh, somebody who really kind of learned the language of food and then translated that into a whole career uh, in the culinary world. And uh, it's been a wild ride ever since. I mean, it really has. You've become this really integral and inspiring part of the Baton Rouge food scene that, you know, you're, you're dealing with Louisiana tourism. Everywhere you go, you're talking about Louisiana cuisine. Heck, I was just up, you know, up the road from me here in, in Virginia, and you did a catering, a big catering job that was because they wanted that authentic Louisiana cuisine. So you really have become kind of one of those profound sources of, of historical and food knowledge when it comes to Baton Rouge and Louisiana that you know, you've had the restaurants, you've been inside restaurants, but now your journey's kind of taken a different, kind of different path. What are you doing now? Well, so, so yeah, that, that path, uh, like you're talking about, um, I'm, I'm really pretty much diving, uh, a head first dive with a, with a backflip and a twist into the travel world. Uh, and so, um, you know, I, I think for, for the last three or four years, I um, I kind of got away a little bit from travel. Of course, during that three to four years was the the whole uh, pandemic era, mm -hmm. and uh, everybody had to kind of cease traveling for a little while. So maybe it was an opportune time to have kind of gone through that uh, and have that be kind of the plan already. Um, but with my radio show, I was able to travel some. With some catering events, I was able to travel some. But, but really, I've, I've missed uh, real travel. I've missed the real be able to uh, work from anywhere I want, create my own schedule, uh, and also create my own itineraries, uh, kind of uh, part of my food travel life. Uh, and recently, I've basically had – gotten the opportunity to, to re-explore that um, through some, some ultimately career changes, but uh, all in ways that I'm super excited about because I'm going to be able to get back to what I really want to do more of, which is uh, try to like roam the earth and, uh, and, and see as much of the world as I can and be inspired uh, from, from those stories that I, I get to make along the way. Uh, and, and so, yeah, kind of opening up a new world into travel, uh, certainly going to be a lot of culinary, uh, food and beverage travel, a lot of destinations that I want to go to, uh, for specifically, uh, the food and the drink, uh, and the people, uh, and, and get to explore that. Hopefully I'm going to be able to find some ways to also make a living doing that. Uh, a lot of that is still being put together right now, but, uh, but I'm actually, Working with a couple different uh, groups, uh, Trova Trip is one that uh, is helping me put together some travel-based itineraries where people can come with me. Uh, and so uh, I'm excited about those kind of trips that I'll be able to take and kind of be the host of a, a group of people that are all going to a different destination to experience the food and the drink. 
Uh, and then I'm also working on some different uh, travel advisor plans. So even if I can't go with somebody, I can still help kind of curate their itinerary uh, based on what I know or, or, or who I might know in different destinations and uh, really try to help other people line up similar type travel. I think that's great because you, again, you're taking another component of the things that you really enjoy that make up your world and your life, which is travel and seeing the world. And you're finding ways to incorporate food and people into that. You're going to take people along with you on this journey, on the ride. And I'm telling you guys, if you haven't been on the road or taken a travel trip with somebody like Jay, who's a chef, who's a people person, and I mean that and not the the coined term, but truly a people person who really engages and, and gets you involved in the entire atmosphere of what's going on, you haven't really traveled. You haven't really seen what's out there to see when you go with somebody like that. So I think that's a fantastic venture of of getting people back together, putting people in a space where they can communicate and and have fun and share things and share experiences that they'll have forever. And it's a big part of what we're talking about is getting people back around a table together, getting them on the road together, which inevitably will lead to meals together. And I mean, I think that's one of the things that I find so fantastic about your entire journey from before I even met you to when I met you and continue to follow and where you're at now, it's always been about not just Jay. It's been about everybody around and incorporating and bringing people together kind of inside your own uh, dinner table world. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, one of the things that I really am at heart is a storyteller. Uh, and it certainly isn't all about me telling my story. Like I, I, I want to, I want to help tell other people's stories as well. And, and, the first part of that is I want other people to share their stories with me, you know, much like what you're doing here, uh, which is why I'm so drawn to it and why I've always gravitated towards you as well, Mark, is, uh, is that you've got, you've got that in you as well, right? Like it's not, it's not just about you. It's about you getting to experience other people's passions uh, and, and help share that. Uh, and I really appreciate that. And that's a big part of what I like doing as well. Uh, and so now I'm really going to be focused on um, taking Louisiana kind of out of Louisiana. So much of my career has been focused on building uh, that Louisiana cuisine brand. Mm-hmm. And, of course, it's been there way longer than I have. And there's so many stories, so many great uh, ambassadors for Louisiana food. But um, but that's been something that I've been able to do uh, here in Baton Rouge and, and in my home state. And, uh, and now I want to also be able to uh, focus even more on taking that out of Louisiana uh, and and sharing my passion uh, with other people as well. And I know that everybody that's that gets involved in this and has an opportunity to do this is just going to be thrilled. They're all going to walk away enriched from it and excited from it and, and look to do more. And so I'm glad you're kind of picking up that torch and taking that lead to get people back out, get them back out in the world, get them to see food and cuisine and, and drinks and everything from different cultures all over the place. So I'm excited just to see where that goes and to hear the stories when they come back. Yeah. And speaking of stories, you know, the whole premise of what we're doing here is to share those stories from around dinner tables, places where we gather together, not necessarily a holiday, just a time where you, you got together with a group of loved ones, friends, families, the same thing, and just had a wonderful experience that, that kind of brought you closer together. What's a story for you that really sticks out of time around a, a dinner table together? Well, you know, there's fortunately uh, blessed so many um, from my history, but I'll, I'll, I'll tell you one of the most memorable meals of my life. Uh, and it kind of ties into this, this travel and tourism world as well. Uh, and, and what I used to do compared to then, uh, now what I'm trying to kind of get back into. Um, so in 2014, I believe 13 or 14, I got a, a, a chance to go to the Dominican Republic on a, uh, what they, what's called a fam trip. So it's a familiarization tour, basically a, a tourism industry sponsored trip where they bring a bunch of journalists. Uh, to a destination to uh, to get them to, to familiar with the destination so that they can write about it, so they can recommend it uh, as travel planners, tour guides, or, or journalists. 
Uh, and so I got to go on one of those trips uh, by way of my, my blog and radio show. And, uh, and it was to the Dominican Republic, the north coast of the Dominican Republic, uh, around Puerto Plata, and then uh, into the interior of the country a little bit, but uh, the beaches around Cabarete and Sasua. Uh, and this was it, was, it was kind of described as a, a guy's trip, right? And they were getting, they intentionally sought out male lifestyle, adventure, golf, food journalists, uh, to kind of experience the north coast of the Dominican Republic and, uh, and, and then be able to create content around it. Uh, and, and so I got to go on this trip, and one of the activities that they had planned was, was this canyoning adventure. And, uh, you know, like I'm a, I'm, I'm a, a large uh, chef type um, where, uh, you know, like that canyoning uh in the the this ravine uh in this river in the remote part of uh, of the Dominican Republic wasn't exactly on uh you know my to-do list uh so i i really was like we were at a we were at a cafe that morning eating a, a Dominican uh breakfast drinking some coffee and they were like all right you know time time to load up in the bus and go and i was like uh i'm going to sit this one out and just like <laughs> Like we've got a perfectly good resort on the beach here and you guys are about to go on this eight hour canyoning trip, you know, like I'm going to hang out at the beach uh, and y'all go. And I was the only one that, that wanted to stay behind. Um, and so I let one of the, uh, one of the, the PR girls from the Dominican Republic tourism uh, company uh, talk me into to not sitting it out. She was just like, "Nah, you can handle it. You'll be fine. You know, we'll, we've got we've got people and guides and all sorts of stuff. We're not going to let you, you know, fall behind or, or anything else." So she convinced me to go. So we we drive. I mean, a couple hours into the Dominican jungle, uh, we stop at this little this little shack. We put on wetsuits. There's there, there's like only one wetsuit that'll fit me, and it, it just has like, it's like a, a onesie, a tight like wetsuit onesie like that surfers wear and stuff, right? You're you're gonna be in cold water, uh, but 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 it it didn't like it went down. It, it basically had shorts on the bottom side of it, so it didn't cover up the bottom part of my legs. Uh, and but other than that, I was able to get it on. Uh, and, and so we, we, end, we, we, we go through it with it. We, we get, we start canyoning. We're going down this river. It's beautiful. I mean, just, just absolutely gorgeous, uh, flowing river. We rappel down waterfalls. We're doing all this like amazing stuff, but I mean, we're probably a quarter of the way in and I'm exhausted. Like just, you know, this is a, this is more than what my body's used to. Uh, and, and. You know, they're they're like uh, I'm like well we got we got to be you know halfway done three quarters of the way done they're just like uh we basically just started <laughs> uh, <laughs> so uh, we we go through the rest of it I'm slipping on rocks falling down scraping up my exposed shins um, when we finally do get to the end and the whole thing like it was really cool uh, but I mean I was I was famished. Uh, I was ready for a beer on the beach, you know, like it wasn't relaxing. It was, it, it was neat. It was fun, but it was the opposite of relaxing. But to, so, so we get to the end of, of the river part of it and we basically are, we're ready to leave to go back to the vehicles to get us out of there. But we have to climb up the side of this ravine to do so. And it's just like a vertical climb on this rocky cliff. Like basically the hardest part of the entire thing at the very end after my legs are beaten to hell. And every time I slipped on a rock and fell on my butt and bruised my tailbone and, uh, you know, and I, I'm just, so I truly had one of the, uh, one of the local guides in front of me holding my hand and another one behind me to catch me if I slipped. So I didn't go tumbling back down all the way to the riverbed, uh, and I mean, we were a solid 15 or 20 minutes behind everybody else getting out of this ravine, but I finally made it, got to kind of take the wetsuit off. We get in this bus, we, we head, I mean, just a couple miles down the road and we pull up 
to this this shack on the side of the road. And this older Dominican lady had been cooking food for us the, the entire day while we were doing this canyoning trip. And she starts taking lids off of pots and setting up this table. And it, we're outside on the side of this little two-lane windy mountain road in the Dominican Republic, sitting on just like cheap plastic chairs and, and you know, a, 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 just a, a, a super cheap but colorful tablecloth on the table. And she starts laying out rice and beans and fried plantains and stewed chicken and all these vegetables and onions and, and all the, like this, just this spread of that, uh, just the national Dominican food that, that you would expect, the pollo gasada uh, and the la bandera is what they call it, the flag. Uh, it's like the, the red, the green with the little sa- the salad, the whites, the rice. Uh, and, and man, we just, we got to just go to town on that. And everybody else there was just as famished, hungry as I was. But uh, I truly, at times in that canyoning trip, I don't know if I would say feared, fearful for my life, uh, but there were several times that I thought they might actually have to, like, get a helicopter out here to, like, life flight me out of this ravine, uh, and and who knows how, how much that's going to cost or how long that's going to take in this remote part of the Dominican jungle. Uh, and so that that meal sitting there with everybody that had just gone canyoning uh, and, and enjoying like that real Dominican home cooking that I think is what, uh, what I also wanted to experience, right? Like it was mm-hmm. okay, we're finally getting to the food part of the day. This is Jay's wheelhouse. This is why I'm here. And it was just this absolutely natural, home cooking, not fancy restaurant food, not white tablecloths, side of the road, Dominican home kitchen cooking, uh, and and rice and beans and plantains and stewed chicken. And it was truly one of the best and most memorable meals of my life. I mean, and and you, you're on this trip with, with a lot of people from different genres, different, Mm -hmm. you know, career paths and different backgrounds and things like that. And, you don't really know each other, and that's why I think these kind of things are interesting. You yeah. don't really know each other going into this hike. Yeah. But when you go through something like that, that kind of treacherous hike, and there's a, there's a lot of exhaustion and there's fatigue, that's when a lot of our, 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 our defenses start to break down and people start to be very real at that point. And when you come out of this exhausting, physically draining, even emotionally draining and mentally draining, you know, walk hike and you get to that spot where the food is laid out family style you're all around the table conversations start there's not a lot of that pretentious let me make puff up my chest kind of thing it's just a bunch of guys who went through kind of proverbial hell on this amazing hike that are now enjoying real like you said real home cooked food around a table together sharing the experience I mean, that's kind of what people don't realize they, they've missed when that goes away. Yeah, I, I certainly agree with that. And, and there's, all, there's just something different about being, you know, in a restaurant setting with a, with a group of people is fantastic. Like one of my mm-hmm. favorite things to do, get a group of people together, go out to eat, right? Um, but that's just such a different vibe than when you're really – a group of people around a table in, in somebody's home or backyard or, or or a setting where it really is just home cooking um, and 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 you know you're just kind of eating family style there's just right. there's just pots and pans of, of all these different things put out on the table and you know you're just scooping and serving and that family style dining I, I think is is coming back it's been a trend in the restaurant industry yep. a little bit. Um, to return to, uh, or, you know, like the, the, to go even like from the small plates, which is meant to be shareables, right? But then to, you know, go the step further and, and say, well, anything shareable if we just, you know, put yeah. a dish of it out in a spoon and like, here, share it. Uh, and, and 
kind of like the the steakhouse sides, you know. I mean, that's mm-hmm. steakhouses have always kind of done that, but I think we're starting to see that pop up in some other restaurants as well, where uh, you know a, a lot of things are just being done family style, and and I think it is kind of a an ode to that style of dining where you're you know make it feel like you're almost at a, a Thanksgiving table or something like that. I mean, that's the point. That's why they call it family meal. That's why we called it family meal in the restaurant when the chef would cook for the staff. That's why you call it family meal at home when everybody's together. It is, yes, a meal that you could go independently and have. But then when you put a group of people around it that are spending some time together and communicating and talking and sharing, then it becomes a family meal. And yes. that's a whole nother level to to like what you're saying. And that's what you are. You're right. A lot of restaurants are going to that. And a lot of people are. That's why we want to encourage a lot of people to start cooking some meals at home and just sitting and talking, you know, whether it's you all cook the meal together and then you sit down and eat together and then you clean up together, or maybe everybody brings a piece and you do a potluck style. It, it's the point is to get back around that table, shed the inhibitions, get rid of technology and spend some time together. Yep. Well said. I well, Jay, man, that was a heck of a story. I now want to go cabin cavern hiking uh, you can sign me up for your next uh, helicopter backup cavern hiking experience. I'm 100 percent there. <laughs> I, like it. I like it. Yeah, we'll go. We'll go canyoning in the in the DR. I like it, man. Where can people catch up with you? Where can they find you, and for your journey, your adventures, your journeys, and and some of these things you're doing. Uh, all of the J. Dakota social media channels are the, the best way. Uh, there's a J. Dakota Facebook page. It's, uh, it's Chef J. Dakota. Facebook.com slash Chef J. Dakota. It'll, it'll just be the J. Dakota page. Uh, at J. Dakota on Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, TikTok, uh, all, all that good stuff. J. Dakota.com has links to all of that. And then uh, a lot more content about everything that I'm up to. There's a blog on there where I, I post uh, about some stuff that I'm up to uh, as well, but social media is updated more for sure. Uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, just stay in touch that way. There's an email list people can sign up for at jdakoti.com as well. So uh, I encourage people to do that. That way you get some updates straight into your inbox. Not a whole lot, but um, enough that it counts. And uh, yeah, uh, I'm looking forward to uh, a whole lot of travel um, coming up in my future. It's going to be fun. Well, guys, you know, I challenge you this, and I'll leave you with this to end the show. One time, one time get a group of people together, and and I'm telling you, once you do this, you're going to want to do it more. Pick a day of the week, invite family, friends, whoever it is, get together, cook together, potluck it together, do something together, put the technology away, and sit down and enjoy a meal together. Eat, talk no rushed, no time limits, just enjoy the time together, you will find that it changes the way you look at yourself, people, the world, everything. Is It just opens you back up to a simpler time where we connected with people one-on-one. And then afterwards, second part of my challenge, everybody help clean up together. Yeah. Don't leave it on the one. Everybody dive in, get it all cleaned up together, and you will want to do this more and more and more. I'm telling you, there are people who have tried it that now do it weekly. Some even do it a few times a week just because they they realized they were missing that big part in their lives. Jay, I want to thank you for being on today. Yeah, absolutely, Mark. Thanks for having me. And guys, again, this is the Family Meal Show, and we're going to talk with people for as long as you guys want to keep watching and inspired to eating meals together. And uh, we're going to have some interesting guests. We've got a pretty long list already set up. And like I said, it's going to be people from all over the place. It's just about eating together in those stories. So I will see you next time. Take it easy, guys. 